This week in Jamaica Now, Christmas pains some public sector workers troubled by late salaries. Backlash, refurbishing works at Devon House under scrutiny for too much concrete. Miss Kitty and Empress Golding announce departure from Nationwide Radio. And Christmas help comes for a woman living in a chicken coop. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. Just days before Christmas, dozens of public sector workers were still not paid their December salaries amid pains in the implementation of new salaries for government workers. The issue prompted Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark to call a press conference on December 21. Dr. Clark expressed regret about the patchy disbursement but said only one of the 52 ministries, departments and agencies was awaiting clearance for the Accountant General's Department to disburse salaries to the financial institutions. Up to Thursday, nurses and other health personnel in the Southern Regional Health Authority that covers Manchester, Clarendon and St. Elizabeth were still not paid. The Nurses Association of Jamaica said the nurses had taken time off to do shopping with the expectation that they would have been paid on Tuesday. The Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, has sought to assure the public that Devon House will appear lusher and maintain its historical and cultural significance when renovations are completed. The government agency was forced into explanation mode following social media backlash at green spaces being replaced with bricks and concrete. A tweet on Wednesday with a photograph of the courtyard of the property from JLB councillor for the Mona Division, Andrew Bellamy, triggered the mixed reactions. The Tourism Enhancement Fund, which is financing the renovations, said the redevelopment of Devon House was necessary to address concerns about safety, pedestrian flow, the functionality of the courtyard, and accessibility to differently abled persons. It said the renovation works, which started in March this year, are expected to be finished in the first quarter of next year. The government property is the former home of Jamaica's first black millionaire, George Tebell. It's also home of the world-famous Devon House ice cream. There is still no motive for this week's murder of Pastor Linville Lewis near his Greater Portmore home in St. Catherine. He was attacked just after midday on December 19 by a gunman who opened fire at him while he was driving from his house. Reverend Lewis was the pastor at the Spanish Town Tabernacle and Greater Portmore Tabernacle. The incident occurred in the presence of other family members who were traveling with him. Church members have expressed shock at the incident. The way appears clear for the tabling in Parliament of a report on former PNP MP Ian Hales. The Supreme Court has dismissed an application for judicial review that Mr. Hales brought against the Commission over the 2017 report that looked into an allegation that Mr. Hales constructed a building in Hanover without receiving the requisite approvals. Mr. Hales, who is a vice president of the opposition People's National Party, says he's not likely to appeal the decision. Now, details of the report have come from the Supreme Court judgment. Among the revelations is how a company run by Charlotte Hales, wife of the former MP, carried out construction of a plaza without approvals. In one case, Mrs. Hales said she was told to build and pay a fine later on. A resort was also built on the Cousins Cove property in Hanover without approvals. Lawyer and media personality Kadeen Miskitty Hilton and social advocate Empress Golding are leaving Nationwide 90 FM effective December 31. Ms. Hilton hosted the weekday Miss Kitty Live program since 2013 in the 3 to 5 p.m. slot. She has not disclosed her next move. Meanwhile, Empress hosted her weekday program, Every Woman, during the 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. slot. Nationwide CEO Cliff Hughes says there was an amicable parting with the personalities. Nationwide says the duo of Kareem Boyatings Weathers and Honika Honeybee Brown will take over the 3 to 5 p.m. slot with the E Zone starting on Monday, January 9, 2023. Some help has come for Amoya McLeish, whose story of living in a refurbished chicken coop in Oxford, St. Elizabeth, captured national attention in November. Days before Christmas, the 29-year-old part-time bartender was selected to receive a $100,000 grant courtesy of the NCB Foundation. Her story was brought to national attention by the star, the Gleaner's sister tabloid. The desperate mother of three pleaded for help to complete a one-bedroom structure she was constructing nearby. Her son is 11 years old and she has two daughters aged 5 and 3. She said the help from the NCB would go a far way in assisting her situation. And that's it for Jamaica Now for 2022. Join us in 2023 for more weekly reviews of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page. 
turn on the notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, special thanks to Tanisha Mundell who does my makeup but she's more substantively here as a court reporter. And to producers Raymond Simpson and... Latanya Janelle Hall. Thank you so much Latanya, it's been an amazing year. And before we go, I wanted to take in some sites of Christmas events across Jamaica. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2023.